Hi, this is Phil Hinton and welcome to another video here on avforums.tv. In this episode, we visited Sky TV to see their new 3D channel and find out how the technology works. So, what is Sky 3D TV? Well, Sky have been working for the last 20, 21 months on uh, developing 3D and we first saw this back in April um, 2008 where we saw a over-the-air test with 3D and we thought well there's an opportunity there to actually uh, see whether it would work with our set-top box. Um, so we, um, we did some testing and found out that actually within our Sky HD box uh, the HD side-by-side -side signal which comes back for the 3D um, worked extremely well and uh, from that we started testing uh, and it's been a gradual build-up and the first thing we ever did was the Ricky Hatton fight back in May 2008 and that was a huge success and, and I think it was pivotal to what we wanted to do and see whether we could actually do 3D here at Sky and it took us to that next stage of development and really over the last few months we've been honing our skills, learning what works, what doesn't work and trying to write the book because I think if people realise 3D has been around for many, many years, but the way that we're doing 3D now is slightly different to the old way of doing 3D. And certainly with the new technology and the way that TV sets are enabling us to actually display the 3D signal very easily, not just in the cinema, then actually we're now finding that uh, we're having to write that book because there just isn't the information out there on how to do it. So it's a lot of learning going on. I think if you look at Sky, um, we, we specialise um, heavily in live outside broadcast. So we have a lot of knowledge on how outside broadcasts work. We do about 120 a month. And so when we started doing HD, we learned how to do HD and we learnt all the intricacies of how HD is put together but we applied what we knew and what we've been working on for many many years and so we've taken it to that next stage there's no doubt about it 3D from a setup point of view is a little bit more complex and when we first started doing it we had cameras that were setting up and taking three, four hours to actually do. We're now down to about 30 minutes, which is probably a standard rig for um, an outside broadcast camera. So we are learning all the time of what works and what doesn't work. But the thing is, we don't need tape measures. We have a lot of equipment that, uh, in, in our trucks that we've just had built that enables us to actually work out the right interocular and right interaxial, all those words that you hear within 3D, which uh, tells you the distance of, uh, that you need to be apart with those cameras. And we are learning what really works and what doesn't work, so we don't get our tape measures out, um, because that's what we don't do in, the, in, the, in a normal live broadcast. But we do know how to start working with that new technology to make it work quickly. Now, speaking with uh, the end users, the, the mass market out there, there seems to be um, two or three different camps when you ask them about 3D. Uh, one of the, the things is that people expect things to come flying out the screen um, at them in 3D. Now, that's not the whole point of the new no. 3D technology. No, it's not. And originally, I think people were, with 3D, expecting a lot of action coming out of the screen. And we learned very quickly that that's a very tiresome thing if you're in that cinema, in that home environment, and seeing things constantly coming out of the screen. We approached it slightly differently, and it's something that if you look at the animations now, they're approaching exactly the same way, and live action is, 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 is uh, approaching it exactly the same way, which is make it more natural. The way that we view uh, in, in our world is uh, with, our, with our eyes is anything in the distance flattens out, anything close up has a three-dimensional feel to it. And as I said earlier, we are trying to make more of a natural feel to the way that we view our content. So if, if we put too much 3D depth into, uh, into um, uh, a, a distance camera, it, it seems unnatural. It doesn't seem right. But equally, it's just the science behind 3D as well, and it's the science behind the way that our eyes uh, work within the natural environment, which is you can't make something uh, 3D that by its natural um, distance isn't 3D. So if we're looking with our eyes, it's not 3D. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to lower our camera angles. So we're actually, we're not forcing the fact that we're trying to make it more 3D than it really is. What we're trying to do is bring it down to lower angles in, in grounds and actually allow the 3D to be more natural. Uh, so what we're working with is working with the clubs to, to 
find those great vantage points to actually get those um, those camera angles. And uh, only recently, um, last night, we, we did the, uh, the Spurs Arsenal game and we found a great position. It's um, not the high vantage point, it's midway down, it's working really, really well. Do you imagine now we've got to do that with all 20 clubs and constantly we've got to put infrastructure in to be able to do that. So it's a gradual process and we're learning what, what works and what doesn't work. So I think what you'll see is a development of great camera angles coming as we start finding where the best positions are in those grounds. But there's no doubt about it. If you look in the distance, it's going to flatten. And if you're closed up, it's going to be three dimensional. And what we're now trying to do is make it more natural by bringing it down. Well, one of the big issues at the moment is that people are going to have to go and buy a new 3D TV if they want to view 3D. They're going to have to buy a new Blu-ray player. Um, there's some manufacturers saying that they need to go and buy a new AV receiver if they're putting their video signals through that. When it comes to Sky, do they have to buy anything new or can it work off the existing HD box? Uh, that's the beauty of this, the existing Sky HD box. It works. So basically, if you have a Sky HD box, it will receive our 3D signal. So they know confidently that when they're buying 3D and, and they're buying a Sky Plus HD box, it is absolutely capable of doing that. Um, where it comes to the 3D TV sets, that's a choice that the people have. But I think you'll notice more and more the manufacturers coming standardising with 3D out with their high-end TV sets. So standard uh, HD box used in exactly the same way as they would normally use it within 2D um, and they get all the functionality that they would normally get within a 2D, uh, 2D transmission. Now there's a, there is a distinct lack at this moment in time of content. Um, some would also say that the TVs are only just coming to market. So how do you see things progressing in the next, say, six to 12 months? Well, I'm really heartened to actually see, certainly from a Sky perspective, we're investing heavily in looking at starting to commission um, uh, programming. And obviously, from a sport point of view, we're constantly looking uh, at what we're going to be doing and, and the next sports that we're actually going to be doing 3D. So we're going to be really ramping up and, and producing a lot more content. But what's good as well is what you're seeing is there are so many movies coming out now in 3D that those will be ready for Blu-ray when the, those Blu-ray players come out um, to start playing back 3D. So I think by the middle of the year you'll start seeing a real move for more and more content coming out there and like everything as soon as people buy more 3D TV sets there will be more content out there so it will be a perpetual movement of getting more and more content out into the marketplace but it's really interesting to see that um, the various um, uh, movie houses out there and production companies are really starting to look at what they're shooting and what, uh, what works within 3D and so I think you're going to see a lot of content coming out very very soon. Uh, so you are a pay TV channel so I have to ask the question uh, will end users be expected to pay extra for the 3D channels? Well if you're a premium subscriber already for sports, movies and HD you'll get this channel uh, by default. Um, the reason we do this is this is not just a sports channel, not just a movies channel, not just an entertainment channel. We enable it to, to be a, all of those things and we want to ensure that you receive all of the content. And this is why you have to be a, a movies, sports and HD subscriber. And the final question, and it's one that confuses a lot of people, is that we have two different technologies coming to market. We have active and we have passive. Um, now your system works in a passive way, it's a side-by-side -side signal. Um, so people with active TVs, they're going to be able to watch your channel? Yes, we, do, we don't um, uh, make any distinction between whether it's active or passive. We're transmitting a side-by-side -side signal, which an active TV will work with and a passive TV will work with. And we've been speaking to all the manufacturers before they release their TV sets to ensure that they can just receive the side-by-side -side signal. Then the actual TV, whether it be an active or passive system, then interprets that the way it wants to. But we have no problem. It's completely compatible with both systems. So I think that's the important thing for the customer. They've got a Sky HD box and they want to go out and get a set. They don't have to worry about whether they buy buying passive or active. It's their choice.